Hey, what up? It's Pika. Friday night over here in Singapore and um, looking at a long, long weekend. One of two in a row, actually. So next weekend's going to be doubly long. If that's a word, that doubly long. Worse. It's, next weekend's going to be worse. This weekend's all right, I guess, but it's going to start really early. So podcast is kind of on time again. Um, I actually fell asleep before this, though, because I just could not keep my eyes open, y'all. Um, it's been a lot of late nights, early mornings, uh, wake up in the middle of the night, checking stuff. Just, I, I can't sleep. I'm too excited. Uh, today was a pretty decent day. We had training this morning. I had six people in our training class. Two of them weren't actually training. They were observing, but that's cool enough. It was nice to have a full class. And then from there, I had a personal training I had to do with um, one of my colleagues. She's going to be a center manager, so I'm really excited about that. Just going through the paces of, you know, what, what it takes to do my work and so she can, you know, do for her like like I do for my center. Um, from there, made a couple of calls for clients, making sure the workshops are full for this weekend, and came home. I made cream cheese pound cake yesterday because my family decided they want to get together this weekend, and it's a potluck. Unfortunately, with tomorrow's schedule, there's no way in hell I can do all that stuff and get to the dinner on time unless I prepped ahead of time. So I think I talked about multitasking yesterday. Um, I made the pound, the pound cake and I delivered it today and came back home. We had McDonald's for dinner because once in a while you just need to treat yourself, right? Had McDonald's for dinner, came back home, and honestly, I was so, so beat. I kind of just lay there and fell asleep. I haven't touched any of my work. I'm about to do a little bit of that here in a minute. But like I said, I have a super early morning tomorrow. So I kind of have to be on point tomorrow. I can't be late. You know me. I'm going to end up late to everything. But tomorrow I can't. I can't afford to be. So I need to go to sleep on time. I want to talk to you about faith and fear. Now, I think I've mentioned what my goals are for November. And I keep looking back at where I was and where I started and where I am now. And part of me is like super excited, super confident, like, yeah, I could get this. Just watch me work. And then there are moments where I'm like, I think I bit off more than I can chew. My eyes were bigger than my stomach. And yeah, I'm going to fail. So I want to talk to you about faith and fear, mostly because that thing has been going through my mind a lot. I flip flop a lot. I know all of you do as well at some point or another. But I do it a lot. And it's annoying to me because I can see when I'm wasting time being afraid. But for some reason, I can't control the monkeys in my mind, get them, you know, just to calm down and sit in a corner somewhere so that I can get my work done. So that is the most frustrating part for me. What I need y'all to understand is you can't have both at the same time. I don't know if you've ever realized that. You can't have faith and have fear at the same time. It's either one or the other, which is why sometimes you're in a mood where you're just fearful and sometimes you're in a mood where you're unstoppable but never the twain shall meet, if that makes sense. Um, it's odd, though. I was talking to a couple of people, and it, it occurred to me, both of these things aren't actually physical substances. You can't see them. It's kind of like a belief in something that doesn't actually exist, but you believe anyway. It's almost like God, right? Faith. Faith is God, right? You believe in something that someone's taking care of you, that there is support, that there is guidance, that, you know... The universe will bring to you that which you need most when you need it most. Um, and that's faith. But isn't fear the same thing? It's kind of like, you know, you believe that everything's going to go wrong. Uh, what is that Murphy's Law quote? Whatever has to happen always happens for the best. But if, I'm sorry. Whatever has to happen always happens for the worst. And if the worst is yet to ha happen, it usually happens to me first. Isn't that the fear? Like, it's going to screw you up. It's coming. You can't see. It's like the boogie monster. It's coming to get you. But either way, both of these things you can't see, but you can't have one and the other at the same time. You can only have one or the other. They're mutually exclusive. They cannot exist in the same place. So why not choose? And that's the hard part, you guys. What I've realized is, yeah, I could choose for a moment. And depending on how strong the feeling of fear is, one's going to knock the other one out of the ring. That's just the way it is. So how do we overcome that fearful feeling, that, that fear that... That mindset that, you know, you're going to fail, people are going to laugh at you. Um, that almost, that high school feeling like, oh my God, they can see me. Oh my God, do I have like a booger in my nose or something? Oh my God, this is all going wrong. I got to start over. How do you get over that? And I know I've said this before, but lately, lately it really has, I've had to put it into action. I've had to put in action 
to get rid of the fear. Once I start doing something, and hopefully it's like something mindless, I kind of stop thinking about it. It's almost automatic. Um, like I've mentioned before, lately I've been transcribing stuff, right? I've been putting together worksheets, um, copying worksheets from hard copy to soft copy, uh, correcting things, uh, speaking to people. I love speaking to people. When I stop and, you know, take a breath and open myself up to whatever conversation is available, I stopped thinking about my situation. I was having um, a conversation with a close friend of mine, and he's going through a tough time as well. He he is in so much pain and is so upset about the situation that he's in that his body is manifesting pain. Whenever he thinks about the situation, his body is manifesting pain. And I spoke to him and I was like, you know what, um, so what's going on? He said, no, I'm just confused and I hate the situation and I'm having migraines again. And I said, you know what, I think the best thing for him, because I know him pretty well now, I think the best thing for him is for him to go off and visit. He um, he has a habit of visiting. Um, it's like an orphanage, basically. He loves to be around kids. He loves to give whenever he has time to give, money to give. Um, and he never shows up empty-handed. So what he usually does is he will save up some money and put it aside. And when he has a chance to take that trip to go see these kids at this orphanage, he will buy ice cream or food or whatever it is. And he will go there and feed everyone and just be around the kids. Something about being around kids where they're not really judgmental. I mean, they do say the darndest things sometimes, but they're not really judgmental. They're actually concerned, and that's why the first thing that they see is what comes to out of their mouth. Um, so I, I basically told him, look, from what I know of you, the best thing that you could do is to take a breath and go there. Go be away from everything that's upsetting you, like house, family, work, whatever. Get rid of all of that stuff, put it in this, on a back burner right now, and go visit these kids. Go talk to them. You never know what one of them may say that will spark the beginning of the solution of whatever it is you need. I've had that happen so many times. It's so uncanny. Um, what was it? I think... Oh, I can't remember now. I think I was talking to um, Cheryl, Miss Cheryl Chapman. She kind of has popped into my life recently, but she's one of those people that I suddenly... I, I don't know what I would have done without her, and I've only known her, like, I don't know, what two, three weeks, Cheryl, like really gotten to know you. Anyway, um, I was having a conversation with her. She was telling me about her life. I was telling her a little bit about my life. And the more and more that we found in common and the more and more she explained about the things she did, the way she saw the world. Um, sorry, I dropped the phone. Um, what she felt about, um, you know, how to, how to get around the world, being resourceful, um, living in different countries, having been away from drama for a while and being happy with the way she, like, accepting who she is, happy with the way she lives her life, um, changing gears when it comes to work because it's, it no longer suited her the way she wanted to, so she stopped trying to climb that ladder, and everything worked out for the best. So these are the kinds of things that we talked about, and somehow along the way, it brought tears to my eyes. It kind of, like, it moved me. It, it, it reminded me of the things that I've overcome. It reminded me that sometimes... All I need to do is just focus on the task at hand. Not worry about the future, not worry about the past, just focus on the task at hand. Um, something else that I was reading lately was, you know, I, I'm totally into this law of attraction thing right now, so it's been like all over everything for me. Um, the other thing I've noticed is if you're trying to manifest something, if you're trying to make something come to life for you, the best thing you can do is stop obsessing about it and just live in the moment. So if you've got to stop and smell the roses, go stop and smell the roses. If you've got to cook, blast some music and enjoy the process of cooking. I mean, that isn't to say that your subconscious isn't still working overtime on whatever problems you have. It's more like lose yourself in the activity that you have and let everything fall into place. It's almost like when you want to obsess about whatever it is that you want. Let's say you want, I don't know, an extra 400 bucks to cover some pop-up bill that you even see coming. Excuse me. I'm so sorry. So it was a pop-up bill that you didn't see coming. Suddenly you need to do an extra 400 bucks to cover that shit. And you need to manifest that. You need to ask God, look, I don't know how I'm going to do this. I don't know how to get through this next change. Please, I am asking for your guidance so that I can get to the next, you know, the next checkpoint, basically. Get past this and to the next checkpoint. So the best thing you can do is say it out loud or write it down, whatever, or think it, you know, just... 
focus on that feeling for about 17 seconds, right? Let it go and then go do something. Go do something where you can lose yourself in that activity, whether it's reading a good book. Lose yourself, get, get immersed in the, you know, the imagery of the book and the, the contents, the, what, the plot, the characters, the twist, whatever it is, just get lost in the moment. Go watch a movie. I do that a lot, actually. I will watch a movie and most times I will have one movie in mind, but by the time I pick a movie, it'll be something completely different. But somewhere in that movie, there was a message I needed to hear. Sometimes if it's not a movie, if I got a cook, you know, I will put on um, the daily mix on my Spotify. And somehow or another, there will be a, a pattern of songs with a particular message that keeps recurring. And there I will get my answer, like what I need to know or what I need to focus on for my highest and best good, basically. So I hope that makes sense. Lose yourself in the activity. Lose yourself in whatever it is that you have to get done. Because obviously, whether you want to sit and fret or if you want to like, you know, boast about yourself or call everybody and congratulate everyone, you know, whatever it is you're trying to do, whatever it is, whatever thought it is that's consuming your time, I bet you there's a list of things you still need to get done. So why not get cracking on that list? Okay, lose yourself in the activity of doing those things, finishing up that list so that the universe can kind of deliver whatever it is you want. But please remember that faith and fear cannot exist in the same plane. They are mutually exclusive. You can have one or the other. You can't have both. You can't have both. It's just like you can't love someone and hate them in the same moment. There's no way. You can do that in the same day. Yeah, absolutely. But you can't do it in the same moment. You can't. You either love them or you don't. You're either afraid or you feel confidence. So, I, at the moment, am a little afraid. I'm afraid of getting exactly what I've asked for. I'm afraid of getting the kind of support that I've been looking for all my life. Someone who actually cares about my well-being, somebody who wants to um, be there for the good and the bad and the ugly, somebody who wants to fight with me on the front lines. Like, get down in the mud and, you know, dig a trench if need be and just wait out whatever heavy fire is coming. I, I need warriors alongside me. That's the kind of support I'm looking for. And slowly but surely, these people are popping up. Seriously. It started with Vanessa. Way back in April. And then I added Mia from China. And then slowly but surely, Rishan then from Sri Lanka. And then, who else? Um, Kamisha, lately. And then Cheryl. So slowly but surely, my tribe is coming together. Slowly but surely, these people are helping me to believe in myself when I don't believe in myself. That's actually why I moved to Singapore. I moved to Singapore because I believe that you are who you are in the first five years of life. And who would know me better than my cousins with whom I grew up? With my uncles who raised me. Because they're the ones who were around for the first five years. Okay, I was hoping to come back to a place where they could remind me of what kind of a kid I was. Because whether I've changed and adapted and learned you know, defense mechanisms and how to put up walls and all that stuff, who I was as a child is still inside somewhere. And I'm wondering if someone can remind me. It's, it's, one, of those, like, it's one of those quotes that says, you know, um, a best friend is that person that when you've forgotten your own song, can sing you your melody and remind you. That's what I want. That's what I want in a tribe. People that know each other so well that no matter what the world tells them about these people, they know better. No matter how many people are trying to put you down in your absence, they will stand, grit their teeth, and defend you. I don't need people who are going to be there to showboat when I'm around. I need people who are going to fight for me if I'm not. Who are going to stand up for what I believe in when someone's trying to pick me apart. Those are the kind of people I want. What do you think? 
So I am a little afraid because I've never had this before and I'm wondering, you know what, when's the other shoe going to drop? And yes, that is a habit of mine. It's a very bad habit of mine because in my life, the universe has shown me that the other shoe does drop. But I'm trying to believe different now. I'm trying to believe in the fact that there is a kind and supportive universe. I'm trying to believe different, hoping that that will change everything for me too. So instead of being afraid of what's going to happen, instead of being afraid of, oh God, did I tell them too much? Are they going to backbite me? Are they going to steal my ideas? Are they going to, you know, um, share what I've told them and then laugh at me behind my back? These are the things I worry about. Yeah, it's stupid, but I do. (laughs) But instead of worrying and fretting about those things, instead of spending time unnecessarily worried about those things, what I'm trying to do is keep busy. And not just busy for the hell of being busy. Busy is in productive busy. Because there's still stuff I need to get done. I make my own deadlines, which is the dangerous thing ever, most dangerous thing ever, because I can adjust the deadline then. Which means if I say, yeah, this is due this week, if by some strange chance I miss the deadline, I don't have to I don't have to punish myself. I don't have to tell myself off. I don't have to write myself up. It's kinda like, well fuck it, never mind, I'll just do it next week then. Which is dangerous, because that could go on forever, right? You know it. I know it. We've done it before. This is what happens with New Year's resolutions. Yeah, yeah, January 1st. Damn it, I'm going to start and sign up and go to the gym and next week. Next week. I can do next week. It's okay. I got it. Next week. (laughs) So, faith and fear cannot exist in the same plane. And honestly speaking, being busy, being productive seriously can take your mind off of things if you need to go and weed your garden go do that but lose yourself in weeding your garden don't sit there and like sit in front of the weeds and think go pull up some weeds go pay attention to whatever whatever it is you're doing something that's kind of a little detail oriented if you need to make a spreadsheet about something I don't know go do that if you need to schedule stuff go do that. If you need to explain something to somebody, go have a, go have some random conversations. Seriously, go have some random conversations. They're awesome. It's a lot of inspiration in a random conversation. They're not actually random, but I'm just saying. All right, you guys, I need to call it a night because I still need to release the next three videos on my YouTube channel. So stay tuned for that. Let me know. Please, please, please. I would so appreciate it if you would like, share, comment, Um, Get in touch with me, please. I want to have a conversation with you. Who knows? I mean, depending on how well the conversation goes, you may be the next guest spot on my, you know, my podcast. I would love that. That would be so cool once I figure out how to call you in, obviously. But um, why not? Why not have a conversation where I am inspired by you and I can talk about something that's dear to your heart, something that might, you know, that might, I don't know, help other people because it's based on something we talked about. That's the kind of world I want to create. I want us to all be involved. I want us to have great conversations. None of this, how are you doing? Hey, what's up? Hey, stranger. None of that shit. Okay? Hit me up. Let's talk. In the meantime, I am going to sail over here to my computer and drop the next three podcast episodes. So tonight it will be, let's see, four, five, and six. So I'm starting way back at the beginning. And um, yeah, I'm hoping it's interesting to you and exciting to you because it is super exciting to me and I really don't have any idea what I'm doing, but I'm going to try it anyway. Okay, wing it. Let's say yes and wing it. All right, my loves. Y'all take care and I will catch you tomorrow. Thank you.